guys going inside? You for now, yeah. yeah. So this is Comics the Gathering in Spanaway or Puyallup or I don't know where the heck we are. Spanaway. Spanaway. <laughs> Tacoma. So you listed as Tacoma on the address, <laughs> but everywhere. we're in Spanaway. These are all a quarter each. They got like 10 long boxes out. They had a whole bunch more yesterday and people just rifling through. Hey guys, Tacoma Comics here and I need a shave today. But I won't get one because, you know, I'm living at my friend's house. But we move in tomorrow or the next day to our new house. Bed comes Tuesday. Washing machine and dryer come Wednesday. Pod comes Thursday. Rent the truck for the storage unit Saturday. It's all moving along nicely. Um, but while I'm sitting here living at my friend's house, I cannot pass up a quarter sale um, at, at a comic book shop. So this is the second day. Uh, I did a live one yesterday. This one I'm actually recording. Um, so Comics the Gathering in Spanaway, uh, they put out five extra boxes today and what they did today was kind of cool. They put one box this way and one box this way so if you're standing on, on that side of the, the table, the next box, somebody's going to stand on that side and you got to skip a box before the next person going this way so you're not bumping shoulders as much. Um, about 10, maybe 12 long boxes and you know, plus the five from yesterday is so about 17 altogether. Um, sorry, five extras today, so about 17 altogether. Everything was a quarter. Some of it was bagged and boarded, some of it wasn't. One of the, the coolest things was seeing what other people uh, grab. You know, I'm sure they're looking at my haul and being like, who wants that, man? I don't even care if it's a quarter. That's weird. But watching, like, different people, you know, oh, my God, the uh, the, the, the the Robin um, books, you know, people jumping on those and the uh, – Battle Scar Galactica. There is a long box of just Angel and Buffy and people, some people ignoring it, some people jumping on it. Uh, just people going all over for like their thing. And it's just really cool to see how kind of diverse this community was. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, so right here, this is Astro City's uh, Dark Age Book 3, number one. I've got one through four of Books one and two, I did not have any of book three. Um, I think that's a really cool cover. I assume that's an Alex Ross cover. Uh, you know, usually he's doing those like kind of realistic portraits of people. I don't see him do a lot of like skeleton ghost kind of Egyptian god, things like that. That's really pretty cool. Uh, totally like that. Um, I got the... There you go. It's now worth 22 cents, not a quarter. I got the Disembodied Head Squadron Supreme number two. Um, it's the sort of thing I see a lot and I, I pass up and then eventually I'm like, all right, I'm going to grab that. I might as well. I'll regret it if I don't. Um, Damnation of Charlie Wormwood. Oh, I've got to take that sticker off. I loved this um, series. Christina Blanche, I follow her on, um, on Twitter. She owns a comic book shop in... in in Indiana, I think, called Oh Yeah Comics or something like that. Um, anyway, uh, I, I love this comic, and it was apparently started out as a web comic, and it's really short, and I really wish it was longer, but it wasn't. Uh, right here, The Skeptics. This was a four-issue series um, from Teeny Howard and Devaki Niyogi. Um, I don't know who the letterer or the colorist are, sorry. Um just a beautifully drawn, like straight out of like 19, early 1960s Cold War era um, stuff. Really, really great storyline and it didn't go anywhere. So another one of those things like you read about it, you loved it, nobody else cares. I, I love that one. Um, grabbed two more of these because they had two more. Uh, this got optioned for TV or movie and it was 25 cents. So I'll pick up a whole bunch of those. That's a total of four of those now. Uh, didn't bag and board these because they're going straight to my son to read. My younger son, one of his favorite is Nova. So on this particular run of Nova, got him four more issues to keep him occupied because he's a big Nova fan. There you go. Found some old school Usagi Yojimbo. You guys say Yusagi or Yusagi? I think it's Yusagi, right? In, in Japanese, you do those hard G sounds. Um, I'm just going to guess. Number 14. The oldest one I've got, I think, is number 10, which is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. Uh, they had a whole bunch of albedos, by the way. I don't know if you know what albedo is. I don't. But I know albedo number one is the first appearance of Yusagi Yojimbo. 
uh, really wish that they had a number one sitting there, but they didn't, so it's okay. Uh, and then I got Fables 102. I've got most of one through 100 of this, and then um, when I, I stopped collecting um, just to take a break, uh, but to get one of the ones I need for a quarter, I figured I'd go for that. Uh, pretty cool right there. Yeah, uh, it's so much, so much, so much powers out there um, that I'm just gonna start collecting. I had a whole bunch and I sold them off. I'm gonna start collecting uh, the trade um, paperbacks or hardcovers or collections, but this is one of my favorite covers right here. I love the look on this this girl's face, or not on this guy's face. I'm not totally sure. I love the look on the face of this person. Um, I just, I just kind of really, really dig, uh, dig that cover. I think I've already got this cover. And then, um, this one was the Powers Encyclopedia. So I figured that's probably not going to be collected anywhere. I'll go ahead and, and, and grab that. Um, because it is a long series. I've done like, you know, six volumes over 20 years, uh, Bendis and Oming together. Really cool. Uh, another sticker I forgot to take off. Anyway, um, John Lehman, one half of Lehman and Guillory, who did Chew. This was Lehman's first solo series after Chew. I, you know, it's rare that I use the word charming to describe a comic book, but this comic book was charming. Um, she has a, a pet egret that helps her steal art, um, but you find out in the end that she's not a bad person. There's a reason she's doing it, and, and uh, it's bittersweet. It's charming. Uh, I really wish this one had gone somewhere, but it did not, unfortunately. God Hates Astronauts, I got number one the other day, uh, just found number two. I've already got, I believe, the whole series, but it's a cool series. Figure for a quarter each, I'll pick up the first two, maybe give them to somebody or something. Got this one for Bueller. Bueller, if you're watching, got your little robot fighter, Magnus robot fighter. I know you dig in the shiny covers. Hopefully you don't have that one. Most likely you do because you seem to have everything. Um... Look at the foot down there. Sorry, look at the foot down there. Kind of funny shape. This actually wasn't um, written by, uh, drawn by Liefeld. It was it was written by Liefeld, but I thought it was really cool that he was writing a Battlestar Galactica. So I, um, I just, is that a computer strapped to his knee? Before cell phones, I guess you could be more imaginative about the way computers would develop in the future. Um, so anyway, uh, a Liefeld uh, Battlestar Galactica. What am I going to say? I owe you no apologies, YouTube. I don't criticize what you collect. You don't criticize what I collect. G.I. Joe, um, pretty dirty copy uh, around the edges and stuff. Um, but not, I mean, not bad, like a 7-0, but... Uh, I like this cover. I like when Marvel did these covers for the 25th anniversary or what is 75th anniversary, uh, 25th anniversary. I'm old, <laughs> 75th, but I particularly like the, the one that's framing snake eyes. I just thought that was really, really cool. Um, so I dug that and then I found that they also had GI Joe and the transformers number one. So when, uh, when they make the movie, the GI Joe transformers movie, I'm going to be rich. No, 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 no. Anybody remember this series, man? This guy was with the, the New Defenders, Doctor Strange and Valkyrie for a long time. And I really liked the character Gargoyle. And I really dug this series. It's, it's something I wanted to um, try to try to purchase recently. I've been looking for it. And just to find uh, number one for a quarter, I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, I got a copy of this yesterday. I love this cover. To me, this looks almost more like, I don't know if that's supposed to be... Um, Bizarro Superman? I'm not sure. It looks like the Hulk, right? It looks like the Superman is hulking out. Um, but, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. This is an Adam Kubert cover. Right? Yeah, Adam Kubert cover and written by Jeff Johns. And this is the first depiction of General Zod and his lackeys, um, the way they appear in the movie. I think they mean the more recent movies, not like the 1977 movie. But I, I could be wrong. Um it didn't say that closely. Then the last one I got for a quarter today, the last two I got, the Naive Interdimensional Commando Koalas. So back when I was like 16 
is when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one came out and, you know, it blew up and people are like, whoa, this crazy comic about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like we say TMNT now and it's like nothing. But it was so revolutionary because there were very few independent comics and especially very few independent comics that were doing well. Um, so after that, in order to uh, jump on the bandwagon, the adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters I actually had a whole bunch of their comics and then I remember I had this issue um the naive interdimensional commando koalas and the, the writing on this was just horrible um it was really just trying to you know make money off of uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle craze but there you go I now have myself more comics because the one thing I need more than anything else is more comics when does it stop? I don't know, man. We'll see. Brilliant. Um, don't know much about this, except it's a Jinx World property, and Bendis wrote it, and Bagley drew it, and Bendis and Bagley both going to be at Rose City Comic Con, and it's number one, so I grabbed it. There you go. There's a divider. Here's what the divider tells me. I don't know if you can read. I wrote in invisible ink. Here's where you stop for a second so you can edit in the footage of Half Price Bookshop Door. And then, nope, sorry, I made a mistake. That's what it says on the other side. I'm reading the wrong side. Sorry, on this side it says, here's where you say you went into the store and what things at regular price. So I went into the store. My kids were waiting in there while I was out doing the sidewalk sale for a quarter. And uh, found, you know I'm a huge Miss Marvel fan, found the um, variants to Marvel Rising. This is Squirrel Girl Miss Marvel. This is the third variant. This is Squirrel Girl and Miss Marvel, and this is the second variant, and I like how they both feature Miss Marvel. There's a ghost spider. The name's growing on me. Um, so America showed up, this Squirrel Girl, um, Quake, and, uh, or no, sorry, Quake, and what's his name? And Captain Marvel is kind of like their godmother watching over them. I don't know. These stupid things are six bucks each. I didn't even realize that. That's an insane price to pay. But they've got Miss Marvel on the cover. So I'm grabbing Miss Marvel on the cover all day long. This is the variant to Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl, not to be confused with the variant to Squirrel Girl and Miss Marvel. Marvel Rising. I don't understand how the numbering goes. And then I went to the dollar bin and I had to get this because it says Gingerbread Man meets Evil Bong. <laughs> How can you not buy Gingerbread Man Meets Evil Bong? I, I don't know. So uh, about two months ago, I was talking to uh, Trinity, um, Jeremy Edwards, and he, you know, I was talking about I don't read much Batman or much conventional stuff, though I like the Tom King Batman and Rebirth, and he got me on to, um, told me to check out the beginning of New 52 Batman that Scott Snyder did. Um, he said the Court of Owls is amazing, and so I said, okay. So I picked up the trade paperback. They had him 25% off. I will give this a read and let you all know. I'm probably like the last person on earth to have read this. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to put that aside so I can read it. All right, so this is the one that says, now pause because you're going to segue when you edit this video into your half price books purchases. So I thought it'd be cool to show you some of the stuff that I find at half price books sometimes. This was a good hit day. You can see a full run of Storm, 1 through 11. No, I'm not talking to you, sweetie. I'm talking to the computer. Uh, missing number 12 in the series, but otherwise they were all there. Beautiful covers. And then I also found a full run of Black Magic, or a partial run of Black Magic. And uh, right after that, full run of Bitch Planet, except number one was in my hand already. But I put it back because I've got like three copies, so I changed my mind on that. And that's how it goes. Okay, there you go. Invisible ink, it's hard to read, I know. So, um, comic I haven't talked about much that, that I actually was digging, um, the limited series and then the 12-issue the run was Faith. And uh, I completed it. I wasn't going to like continue with Faith in the Future Force or anything, but I'm a sucker for like variants that I actually dig of stuff that I've done. So, um, I got a variant, it's a number one, that is the third Variant, variant, um, it says cover B, right? So I guess it wasn't a variant so much as an alternate cover. 
the difference being, I don't know what the heck the difference is, um, because it says cover B, valiant number one, faith, and then this one says cover B too. Um, I was looking at the serial number, uh, what is this? 58992003345, this is 003383, and then they're both 00121. So, I don't know if one, I don't think one is the uh, variant to the, because they did a four issue limited series, then they did a 12 issue run, but neither of these say that the four issue limited series, but they both say they're cover B to faith number one. My mind is blown and, and I'm confused and lost. I don't know what I'm going to do here. So I'll show you number two. There you go. And a second variant. And yes. Faith is a plus side superhero, and if you've got a problem with that, you can go jump in a lake. It's not the words that I was thinking of saying, but the words I'm going to say. Anyway, uh, there is faith number three, variant cover. Faith number four, variant cover. Faith number six, variant cover. Faith number 10, variant cover. Notice how I skipped a whole bunch. Faith in the Future Force. Um, digging this cover, I want to say it looks like a Bill Sankovich, but I, not with those colors. The, the, the drawing style looks like his, but those colors do not look like a Sankovich thing. So I'm going to have to research this one to see who did this alternate, uh, this variant cover. And then there is this uh, Faith's Winter Wonderland, which I heard wasn't so good, but I was in a buying mood and I can't stop myself. Stop! I gotta get on one of these auctions on the other side someday soon. Uh, probably my fourth copy of Motor Girl, but damn, I love this comic. Um, for like short, powerful series, you know, I'd, I'd point to King and Gerard's um, Sheriff of Babylon, I'd point to King's Vision, I'd point to Tom King's um, Miracle Man. I'd point to Terry Moore's Motor Girl. Um, this, I think, only went 10 issues. The last issue sort of let down. Um, I'm not going to give anything away. Uh, I don't know if he meant it to end that way or if it was a, like a plot device he used because he got bored and didn't know what else to do. But um, besides being a super fun read, by about issue 7 or 8, uh, you get to some absolutely heartbreaking, heartbreaking stuff in, in this. Um, and I can't tell you. It's I won't tell you, but it's uh, he writes like nobody's business. Really great series. Rick and Morty, Little Poopy Superstar. Why did I buy this? Because I can't stop myself. It's number one. Deal with it. I got it. Yay. Moon Knight, number one. Um, this cost me the... Largest, $2.50. I think this is my second, if not third, copy. Um, really was digging Lemire's, Lemire's um, Moon Knight. Really phenomenal. And then um, I've got the full, uh, I think it's a five-issue run of Adeline Rising by Charles Soule. And I only got it because they featured an older Miss Marvel. Not like the one in, in Exiles, but just like... A, you know, age, you know, mid twenties, Miss Marvel, I think, um, it was pretty cool. Uh, this is a variant cover, um, with some dead heroes, Jane Foster and Iron Man. I can't see in the reflection. Oh, I don't know. Some other dead superheroes. They're dead. Who cares? Um, so yeah, I picked that up as well. Uh, and I think that was it. And I think I will stop buying back issues for a while because I'm going a little crazy here, guys. Um, love making the videos. Love talking to you. Shout out to the young lady who subbed me up today. And she's going to uh, put out her own channel streaming of her video game playing. And I told her I would sub her back. Uh, she was pretty cool. Uh, worked at that this, the shop, Comics the Gathering, that I went to. Um, so, yeah, dude. Dude, there's lots of you. Yeah, dudes, I think that's it. I got some editing to do, and then I got some reading to do, and I'll talk to you all later. So have a wonderful day. I'll catch you all soon. Take care.